I, I honestly <laughs> I honestly feel like it will be. Uh, there you go. Uh, interestingly enough, though, speaking of the victor, it. I don't know whether it'll be as contested as uh, maybe expected because we know Soren can play the Irelia into it. We saw that against H2K last week. So while it should be contested, we know the Copenhagen Wolves will feel comfortable giving it over. So Copenhagen Wolves, they tried that counter pick after getting beaten with it by SK. Fox rather than Irelia into Soren's victor. The rest of the band's Varus targeted to Nuke Duck. Jace has been one of the others that's been very contested and ironically, Copenhagen Wolves do not want to deal Victor, so they're not looking for that counter pick that has worked for them before. And remember, Copenhagen Wolves are fighting for their lives. If they lose this game, they place 10th and will be going to the Challenger Series next year. So, so far, no jungle bans, no AD carry bans either. Normally, you'd expect to at least maybe see a Callisto or a Sive sneak in here, but both roles are wide open here. So, whatever the Copenhagen Wolves pick up, Rakat, no, they're in no hurry to uh, secure both of those picks for now. But that is a Thresh being banned away from Cast. That's the champion we saw him last week. But uh, interestingly enough, we know Vanda plays a lot of Thresh as well. So they kind of concede that point and just take it away from Cast. And we have to highlight the AD carries, as you mentioned. Callista, first pick here for the Copenhagen Wolves. We know that Siv is still up and available. Siv is, is currently Mr. World's most played champion, three out of his 10 games. Actually been picked 29 out of the last 30, as we heard from Crepo and Deficio on the analyst desk. So Rocket now trying to decide where do they put their priority. All of the jungle is up. All of the top laners are up. If they don't want to reveal anything, you can pick that Sivir. It'll work with any team composition. Alistair's up as well. Other, yeah. There's just a lot still available in this game. A lot of it's because there's been bans here like Fizz. Uh, I mean, Steve has played one game of Fizz. Uh, he went 0-4-1 in that game. So, I mean, unless Copenhagen Wolves and Rockat have been kind of squaring off against each other previous weeks and it's caused them a lot of trouble, that may be the case. But Rockat finally figure out what it is, is exactly they want in the form of Rumble and the Alistair. So there's the Alistair we're expecting. Sitting on their AD carry, there's no rush to take it. And uh, likewise, both junglers up, but I kind of feel that uh, Copenhagen Wolves may have got the better side of this. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure so far. And, you know, Rocket put a lot of priority on this Rumble last week against Fnatic. They actually first picked it on blue side, um, partially to steal it from Huni and obviously just how powerful Rumble is in the current patch. But Steve is one and two on that champion. I'm not particularly blown away by it. But we'll see how they round out the rest of their composition. Nidalee locked in for Shook on the Copenhagen Wolves and that flex pick for Shen, Lenny has played it up top, and we have seen it in the support, despite the fact that Jisui Kass has not played it in summer, many other people have, so you've got that opportunity to move it where you want. Yeah, certainly still are a lot of options for the Copenhagen Wolves, but I think that Nidalee pick uh, may be, well, pretty detrimental to Rocket here if they start locking uh, an immobile mid laner. That's the kind of uh, mid laner that, that Nuke Duck has been playing more often, the low mobility mid laners that have poked. Varus not on the table. If he were to go for something uh, like a, a Jace, if he's looking for it, we've seen games from him before, that would be kind of difficult to play into this. Although Nuke Duck has been heavily focused here with the Varus, with the Victor, we have to see what his next tier is, and then it looks like they're going to hide it till last. So I quite like that final counter pick option for Nuke Duck, but Azir is his most played champion next to Varus. Both of them have played four games, and actually, uh, Azir has been banned against Nuke Duck in nine out of their 16 games. So uh, it's their most targeted champion at uh, this stage in the summer split. So Rocket got, a, I think, a, a good combination of everything, except hard engage, um, outside of just throwing a silver ulti and running at you. I mean, they've got... Which is pretty hard engage, I'll admit. <laughs> However, <laughs> it's pretty it's hard. Lacking CC is the words I wanted to say. Also, I mean, they've got, now got the Gragas mixed in there as well. So you do have some engage tools, also the disengage coming in as well from the Gragas. So they do have a fairly well-rounded composition right now. Uh, and I actually like the play of just hiding their mid lane because it now forces uh, Soren's hand. And Soren goes to what has previously been somewhat of a counter pick for him against the victor in this Aurelia into a blind matchup. This seems quite risky for me. I agree. <laughs> I mean, quite risky is putting it lightly. I don't feel like uh, free, uh, Soren is in a position where he can go, okay, Aurelia, this is it. It will win every matchup, unless he's become some kind of Aurelia god in the last three weeks. And unless Shook is going to camp that middle lane. For anybody that watches the NALCS, High played Nidalee last week against CLG and put on a great demonstration of how uh, much impact a jungler can have across the lanes. 
throwing those spears out, consistently being in your face. So if Soren gets some help from Shook, that is a terrifying 2v2 combo. And this is something that we were talking about in the office earlier this week, how the jungler plus your mid lane, jungler plus your top laner, how will they compare versus their opponents? And I really like Nidalee plus Shen against the likes of Rumble Gragas in the early stages. Get that taunt down, some of the pounce damage from Cougar Foreman. Azir will be locked in here for Nuke Duck. So going to tried and tested for Rockets. Copenhagen Wolves going to be relying on Soren and Freeze to put a lot of the damage down. So it's interesting that the Azir was the lock in here because this is the exact lane that we first really saw the Aurelia come out with Faker playing it uh, against the Ku Tigers, I believe it was, where uh, Faker just goes Aurelia mid into Azir. It's going to be great. But Rockat now uh, with the Azir, this is more crowd control stacked on top of what they already had. So further disengage, uh, further engage if you want to Sharima shuffle your way into the fight. Whereas the Wolves may struggle when it comes to uh, looking to take down towers and sieging as a group because uh, the Aurelia melee range, Shen melee range wants to be in another lane anyway. It's all going to be now on the spears that are coming from Shook. Yeah, and of course, if they can get that early dive, early aggressive lanes working in their favor, hugs all around. A lot on the line in this particular matchup. And of course, for Copenhagen Wolves, can they avoid 10th for Rocket? Can they make it into the playoffs? They're currently in that position but they do need to at least split one and one on their next two games. There's the team comps on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. If you think the Copenhagen Wolves will avoid 10th place or at least keep their hopes alive, hit us up on Twitter, hashtag CWWIN. If, however, you think Rockat can put their foot in the playoff door, tweet at us, hashtag ROCWIN. Loading up into the rift for game one in week nine the European LCS. This could start the tide of tiebreakers. Ladies and gentlemen, we didn't get any last split, depressingly. Maybe we'll be lucky and get them the splits. <laughs> so, yeah. one thing we do want to talk as we load in, Soren tells us what he's playing like without fear. I actually think right now we're probably, like, really dangerous because we have nothing to lose, basically, and all we can do is just like go hard, like there's nothing to lose, so you're not, you don't have to be afraid of, of messing up or something, you just play to, to win. 30 seconds until minions spawn. So, Soren, nothing to lose. There is a spot in the LCS that is still technically on the line, but I think it's the right attitude coming into the game, and just had a brainwave, I actually remember there was a battle, and it was also for 10th place in spring, MYM and Giants at the 13th hour all of a sudden. Yep. Giants pulled themselves back. Can Copenhagen Wolves do the same? As we see both teams with a very defensive start. Defensive starts overall, and uh, it's weird you talk about last split and similarities because uh, as we see Copenhagen Wolves uh, looking for the lane swap, weirdly enough, week nine of the spring split, Copenhagen Wolves and Rockat faced up against each other then, and Copenhagen Wolves took the win in the first game of the first day of week nine. So if Lightning can strike twice, it's not all over for Copenhagen Wolves, but they certainly are playing with uh, a composition that kind of says that they've got no fear here, just blind picking the Aurelia into mid lane and then dealing with whatever Rocket throw. On the bright side for the Copenhagen Wolves, I think they've got a very clear win lane, win game, or if not, it's going to be difficult. Something we always talk about is their comeback mechanics, and there's not a lot of wave clear for the Wolves. Yep. The last time these teams met was in week five. It was a Rocket victory. Very convincing, as you can tell by Kills, Towers, Dragons. And we see a lot of early trading here in this middle lane between the Soren and Nukta, as well as the hand holding for both teams' respective junglers. Yeah, this is something that uh, has started to kind of drift towards giving the top laners more experience, uh, especially when you watch some teams in LCK that actually give over the buff sometimes. I believe uh, Marin just kind of regularly gets it while he's on uh, Maokai. But the early game certainly has started to shift in uh, the metagame and how we've seen it. I wonder whether these teams are going to look for the, uh, the the bouncing the wave that Krepos talked about a lot and then kind of leaving three people there and your jungler just goes and uh, helps out the rest of the map. But we have seen the uh, upside down lanes for now, so that is not going to be the case at all. Not right, this time around. We're talking about those upside down lanes. Freeze, as well as Yasui cast up in that top lane with a small advantage, shoving in Mr. Riles and Vanda. Obviously having that melee support is going to make life a little difficult. And Kalist is still very, very highly contested. Freezer's stats versus the average. Well, exceptional, to say the least. 
and that is on the current number 10 team, so that's also something to remember. Freeze's stats in general are just very good when you look at his laning phase uh, for the number 10 team. I mean, he regularly ends up up in CS against his uh, enemy AD carry, so we'll see exactly how uh, Freeze can do in this matchup. But I think the bot lane dynamic here is actually a very unique one because these are both teams that changed a player in their bot lane midway through the split. And now the question is, it's the first time they're meeting, who has had the uh, the better settling in period now for these bot lanes? I'm actually glad you bring that up because Cass has played now six games in the LCS. Mr. Rawls has played 10. And last week's uh, Friday was the first time that Cass really looked fantastic on that Thresh. Looking for those flash hooks, finding them a lot of the time. And we'll see how that works out. Steve and Rumble also. Uh, Steve has had some good games, and Steve has been heavily focused yeah. for some bad games. And Steve has been left to the dogs. Uh, I distinctly remember talking about how a team can, you know, prioritize some of that farm, prioritize some of the experience, and Steve sometimes is on the losing end of that discussion. It certainly looks, though, by the way, that uh, Greg has positioned himself down in the bottom lane, giving him a ward. certainly doesn't look to be the case for this one. Yankos actually going to try and give the birthday present over to Lenny at this point. Does get the flash. It's a nice little gift for him. Yeah. Did not follow for the body slam flash, Yankos. So far, off to a decent enough start. Going to be helping out Steve on that rumble. I want to take a look up at the top lane for a little because Freeze has now extended that CS advantage to 16. Stress, you asked about who's settling in more. In this game, Freeze and Cass have obviously the advantage, but it is the lane matchup playing in their favor. We're in a very unique situation with this lane matchup in that we don't see Callista and Sive in the same game very often at all anymore. Haven't for a couple of patches. Uh, yes, Callista did receive a couple of changes in the previous patch, but Freeze and a lot of the AD carries clearly still think Callista is a top tier AD carry regardless of the fact that she now only scales off that 90% and you can see that Freeze is just laying down the law in this top lane. I mean there's not a lot that Vanda can do in this situation. Being an Alistair has to sit back and respect the double range uh, and Cassie's just going to throw out the bindings, put down the, uh, the the pool just again and again, just harass them down and get them out of lane. <laughs> Well, it rooted, Rolls. Yeah, it was normalized to now, uh, I think it's 0.1 of a second at the end of a recall. So I'll tell you exactly how close to uh, to catching this Dorales that actually was. But the recall itself is actually going to be uh, a, a big factor here because now Copenhagen Wolves, do they sit in the 2v2 in the bottom lane uh, and bring Lenny top? Or do they stick with the 2v1s right now? Because honestly, in the 2v1, Mr. Rales and Vanda are getting eaten alive. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out what decision they decide to prioritize. As you mentioned, on the patch with the changes to Callista, scaling slightly less off that AD, uh, flat AD, we're seeing more and more common the Blade of the Ring into Hurricane build, and Cutlass already secured the freeze. Pickaxe for Mr. Riles, and the swap has been matched. So both Freeze and Cass have moved their cells down to find Riles and Vanda. Steve showed in the top lane actually quite quickly, so it was well informed. Low risk, and Shook stood right on top of a ward. We're six minutes in, and we've not seen Shook show his face at all. He's even on CS with Yankos. Yankos already had a successful gank, so that early game impact that Nidalee could have, not showing through yet. Not yet, but it's also, as uh, Yankos gets on to Cass, well, he doesn't hit, but Cass is just going to be able to walk out of it. Should be able to. Barrel's going to at least put some damage down, and Cass loses 75% of his hit points. Yeah, that is... Uh Obviously, not what Cass was looking for. He was just trying to get that pink ward, but uh, too, uh, a little too greedy, a little overzealous down in that bottom side. Uh, but honestly, the, this Nidalee not having the impact yet uh, isn't the most detrimental thing right now for the Copenhagen Wolves, because once the Runeglaive is complete, once she can start throwing out the spears uh, and sit in front of turrets and, and kind of look to uh, have this more uh, split pressure that Copenhagen Wolves are looking for across the map with the Shen, uh, with the Aurelia, that's when Copenhagen Wolves need the Nidalee to start doing it. They need those spears to land when she's sitting there with Freeze and Cast, while Irelia and Shen are off in other lanes. Timing element involved for the Wolves. Let's see if they can find it. We did catch a quick glimpse of Soren jumping onto Nuketak in the middle. And whenever you've got that Irelia mid, you almost always want that exit strategy minion. Dash in, Equilumer Strike, get a couple autos and dash out. Grepper explained it beautifully last week, and unfortunately Soren didn't have those minions all the time. 
Gone for the Sheen first versus the makings of a Marilla Nomicon. Everybody's building up their power. Looks like Runeglaive already completed for Shook. So slow and steady as all of the lanes are farming themselves up into a powerful position. So slow and steady, but this bottom lane really, uh, again for the Copenhagen Wolves, seems to be, as usual, getting ahead. We talked about uh, how Freeze normally gets himself ahead, but this time it's, it's going to translate into a, a, a real mismatch of uh, actual item spikes here for Mr. Rallis. He's now going to have to sit back and wait for quite a while here uh, when it comes to actually having that second item complete Infinity Edge into uh, likely Static Shiv at this point as uh, Rallis. He's just going to want to sit as far away from freeze and farm as possible in that lane that he can and just not really get forced off the wave. But he has managed to even up a little bit of the CS uh, with the time that freeze spent backing as well. But this has been a slow paced game. We'll see if Shook invading now opens this one up. No Gragas in uh, the top side jungle. He's all the way up in top lane itself. And Shook is well warded here so they can read him like a book. And of course, Yankos is the one that's picked up the successful ganks already. Forced the flash, which is, you know, almost available for Lenny. Showed his face to help out Mr. Rawls and Vanda. Because of the fact that Cast got chunked out, it has allowed Mr. Rawls to equalize that farm. Copenhagen Wolves, as well as Rockat, actually get standard lanes relatively often. Copenhagen Wolves in half of their games, for Rockat, a little over half of their games, they get these standard lanes. But for both of them, they're traditionally a little bit down in gold at 10 minutes. Today, they're very, very even. And I think you can feel the weight of this game, how much it means to everybody. And he's gonna get caught by the body slam. Kask is actually gonna knock him to safety. As Lenny well timed his dash. So, no summon a spell you. What this is gonna do though, Shook is gonna hop over that wall and look to uh, invade some of the jungle down on the bottom side. I would imagine actually it's gonna start Dragon seeing Gragas in the top lane. And it's because of how pushed up Freeze and Just We Cast was. So, uh, it's a good read seeing the Gragas. However, they uh, aren't really gonna be able to answer this from the side of Rockat. So, just the slight error from uh, Yankos of showing without really getting anything too much. Leads to the first dragon. Yeah, and for only the seventh time, this split. So the Copenhagen Wolves have now played 17 games. In seven of them, they've got the first dragon. They've at least started an additional win condition for their team. Five dragons into winning a team fight, because I really do not like the wave clear um, side no. of Wolves. So if they ever get into a position where they have to deal with Rumble Azir Siva under a tower, I think that's a scary position to be. However, if they can force Rocket to fight for a dragon, good way to look for other options. That's beyond scary, Kevin. That's like seeing us before we get makeup before the show. That's, <laughs> that's how much of a nightmare that one is. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Prince of Wales, I'm not I'm sure about you, but I'm lovely before and after. I was going to say, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, <laughs> Trev. But uh, at, at this point, that's a bit of a nightmare situation if it gets there. We are a long way off that one, though. Still no real... Uh, opening up of the game when it comes to uh, skirmishes and fights, mainly because no team has really had to right now. Copenhagen Wolves are fairly content to be holding uh, a little bit ahead in the bottom lane, but there is a binding that lands. Yeah, it's going to equate to a lot of damage for Vanda, but of course he's going to be able to sustain himself up with that triumphant roar. And I do think uh, Shook may have misread the situation. I think he thought he's locked in Evelyn. Because <laughs> we've not seen him do anything at the moment. Yes, he's farming well, so well, I'll give credit to that. They made the but call, there's so, so much power in Italy at lane. Right, right. Well, yeah, you're not wrong, but he's also not doing anything intrinsically wrong himself when it comes to it. Uh, he's got the first dragon of the game for his team. Uh, he is going to become relevant the later into this game. But honestly, there hasn't really been all that many situations for Shook to get himself into the emulator. Bot lane has been shoved in, Nuke Duck has been getting shoved in, and without a super risky gank, it's difficult. Also, with just with the uh, the pressure that Yankos put in top lane, unless he was there to counter gank, which he kind of wouldn't get too much more uh, than just uh, an exchange of summoners, I actually feel like he's done fine just picking up the dragon. The only thing is, because of the limited options, Steve has a 12 and a half minute Leandri's Torment on Rumble. Right. He's getting very close to getting level two in that ultimate. Morella Nomicon's picked up a nuke. Finally, Shook is trying to play Whack-A-Mole, <laughs> but doesn't have the best aim at the moment. And Vanda, if you've gone for the headbutt pulverize, you can't knock Freeze under your tower. So defensive play means Freeze and Cass have now built up that CS lead once more.
Yeah, uh, uh, going back to that Leandri's torment is actually mid lane is where the action is. Soren is in so much trouble. The body slam connects, <laughs> and he just gets ping ponged under the tower. Happy birthday, says Jankos. Oh, the bounce house in the middle lane. I mean, that's the problem with Soren shoving up so much is that Shook isn't able to make those plays without uh, any kind of spear landing, and even then, it's dangerous. This time, however, Jankos, now that he has his ultimate available, easy path into the mid lane to pick himself up a kill. That is one of the problems that Zorin is going to have here, is if he wants to pressure Nuketuk, he has to overextend. Well played by Yankos once more. Three times we've seen Yankos, three times he's done something positive for Rockat. It seems as though we like to talk about objectives. First blood for the former first blood king. Only the seventh time this split as well. Maybe now that it's his name day. Maybe it's his name day. There you go. He can Takes us back in time to when he was more successful at finding early kills. Rockat, however, this swap up now, they uh, lost their bottom tower. So they're just going to give the farm over to Steve down on the bottom side. Uh, the problem is, once Steve pushes it out, he uh, is not going to be able to uh, farm that wave without the uh, sight of the Copenhagen Wolves bottom lane up in the top side, which is where they're heading. And Rockat have uh, the attempted push on the tower, but Freeze is going to get there in time. And the thing is, Rocket, I, I feel like they're so scared of this 2v2. Oh, yes. It's the second time they've tried to swap away. They managed to shove Lenny out, and then... Are they going to swap again? I mean, yes, they're down 20 CS. There's a BF sword finally for Rawls, so he's going to be slow to I edge, but slightly quicker to I edge static shiv. Versus the Blade of the Rune King. The lead that Rumble has, though, is, is kind of offsetting that. Uh, because Rumble is just going to be very, very relevant in these team fights. Leandri's Torment, already completed as we alluded to, is sitting on a little bit of gold. We'll have the source with boots uh, in about a minute or so. Should be just in time for Dragon, but Cass is blasted back. And Jankos is going to do it again. No, Fate's call! That's going to save Cass's life. Soren's decided to engage on Steve. Steve starts to overheat. Here comes Nuketuk. He's actually going to knock Soren onto the back. The Blade Search to Minions. One more order shall be given. Nuketuk trades one for one. In the bottom lane, Soren figured he had it set up just one versus one, but Nuketuk had already realized that he had to roam out, and uh, the appearance of Lenny in the middle lane meant that he knew he was ha having to head bottom lane as well. That's going to be a turret going down in favor of Rockad, which will put them ahead in the gold lead here. How do Copenhagen Wolves respond with this? Because Shook is deep in the enemy jungle, but he's about to get surrounded if the bottom lane can make it in time. So Rockad are going to try scramble to defend the mid tower. Dragon will be up in 30 seconds. Copenhagen Wolves took an uncontested Drake to secure the first of the game. Rockat will have the timer for that. He will have heard the noise. And Mr. Rawls and Vander, they're setting themselves up top. Doubt we'll see a dive. But look at how many people topside Wolves have right now. Uh, they've got three people topside. They've got... The Aurelia down on the bottom side. Okay, Rockat aren't rushing for the dragon yet, but now you're able to track the wolves on their movements through. Uh, they did, however, secure good vision control on the top side, so they're looking probably at this point to trade for the tower. Inevitably, they'll get the tower regardless of whether the dragon is started by Rockat or not, with how low the tower is. And with Shook up here, actually, Rales and Vander probably need to start backing themselves away here because that minion wave is going to push in. And now that that rune glaive is completed, oh! these spears are really starting to hurt Rockat. You're going to have to run unless the team can get there in time. So, Teleport available. Headbutt pulverized went down from Vander. Teleports come in from behind. Here comes Steve. That's a good equalizer. Stand United will bring Lenny into the Fight. Lenny's gonna find the taunt, but it's a flash away from Steve to avoid it. Nuketuk is gonna shuffle over the wall. Vander's looking for a pulverize. He'll back away before he can find it. Everything in the kitchen sink is thrown in for naught. Oh, well, they got a lot of summoners from the Copenhagen Wolves at that point, but Soren is playing the split push game down in the bottom side of the map as well. Look at uh, top side. Again, Jankos is looking to continue. This still has his ultimate available. Jankos gets taunted, he gets rooted. Vander and Rawls are trying to get in. That explosive cast will be defensive for now. Tower was secured, you can see it on the bottom. Shook, he's jumped in. The Rune Glaive plus auto attacks will secure the second kill for the Wolves. They've jumped onto Vander and his will is broken. Two for zero up top. The Copenhagen Wolves just taking objectives both sides of the map from this one. The top tower is likely to fall here as well. Soren did get the bottom tower. Meanwhile, while that engagement was going on, so the Wolves 
have kind of said to Rocket, we don't care that you had Dragon Control earlier. We don't care that it was a slow game because we want to play the objective game. We want to get into three lanes at the same time as this game continues. And with those two uh, side lane outer towers being down, only the middle lane tower stands between them and a 1-3-1. One, one. And with Dragon coming up shortly, Copenhagen Wolves, the Siege middle could go for Dragon. Options are plenty. 3,000 gold up for the second time in 11 games. They are looking likely to have a lead at 20 minutes. This mid lane Irelia and the movement around the map seems to be working out for the Wolves. It also helps that Mr. Riles has been kept a little down. Right. It's, for the most part, it has been good. I mean, Soren taking the 1v1 earlier, got the kill from it, allowed him to get the goal to now have a hex drink alongside his uh, Trinity Force for this one. So while Soren's scoreline is 1, 2, and 0 right now, which is quite underwhelming when you look at it from a, an outside perspective, his actual impact on this game has been very large. Which, uh, you can't equate it, but the pressure right. that Soren is putting has now become a split push, Irelia. Very few, actually nobody on the rocket side can take him one-on-one -on -one, um, at the moment. There's no armor to speak of. And Copenhagen Wolves, two dragons. Uncontested as well. I actually, looking further on into this game, I wonder who will be able to take him on one versus one. Nuked up with Azonius, I don't think he's going to last through the damage. Flashes gets bound anyway. Oh, he's going to get connected, but the Emperor's will, the divide rather, will split off the jungle. So ultimate used and the summoner spell. Copenhagen Wolves setting themselves up for the last remaining outer tower. It's three to three in tower. This will be the fourth of the game if the Wolves can take it. I like the tactic here by the Wolves, but they're going to need a little more than one minion wave like that. Here's where the spears have to count. We saw it in the top lane. This is where Shook has to earn his money in this game. He's got to get the damage out. And this is also something you mentioned in Pix and Ban, Stress, the somewhat limited siege power of the Copenhagen Wolves. Azir and Sivir got such great wave there. Unfortunately, as soon as Wolves got to the tower, Shin can't offer a whole lot. Aurelia can't offer a whole right. lot. Need to immediately back away. It's one of the very rare cases when in this situation, uh, the sum of all the parts does not do the job. It's individually across the map that the Copenhagen Wolves actually have to uh, pile the pressure on, and that's exactly what they're defaulting to now. It's what they have to do if they want to really keep the pressure on to Rocket. Aurelia up in the top lane right now, Shen on the bottom side has his ultimate and the uh, teleport still available. So the Copenhagen Wolves know what they've got to do. Executing it now against the Rocket team, who is going to look to hard engage onto Freeze and Cast is going to be a tricky one. I don't think the Wolves are also doing, I feel, maybe even overdoing. Every time they're applying pressure on an area of the map, they really put a lot of wards into it. You can see, you know, five minutes ago, they had, what, six, seven wards on the top half of the river. Now they've got four, five wards on the bottom half. It's allowing them to play with the pressure, but it's a lot of vision. For now, the problem is, though, their wards aren't conducive to playing risky. The wards aren't deep enough to be pushing up to inner towers. They have no real vision apart from the shallow entrances to the river. So it means Copenhagen Wolves can't look to extend further, and a lot of it's just to do with Middle Tower. Middle Tower still being up reduces the ability for the Wolves to actually just push into the jungle. They're doing it, but look at how risky this is. Cast takes a lot of damage. Rocket certainly putting the heat on. Very preemptive, defensive equalizer from Steve. He's still got a CS advantage, but it's shrinking now that the Wolves have unlocked really their side lanes. Shook farming up a storm. Got Abyssal Scepter completed, Sork Shoes. There's that Rune Glaive as well. We saw how much damage the Spheres can do. And we're still waiting for the Wolves to crack open the entirety of Rocket's jungle. And you can see Yankos also still farming his way up, donating red buff over while getting tanky out with Inspector's Cowl. Very early Void Star from Nuketuck. I think the counter the Spirit visage in the Abyssal Center. Yeah, and also a Hex Drinker onto the Aurelia as well. So I I'm interested to see where Nuketuck goes from here with the itemization. Has a blasting one here. Will he look uh, to pick up uh, either the, the route towards the Rabbitons Death Cap, which now is such an expensive item that we'll see it later into the game. I kind of expect him at some point to look to pick up the Zonyas later into the game if uh, the utility is what he's looking for. But right now, honestly, Blue Jack has a lot of options available. It depends on what lane he's going to position himself in. Because if he's sat in front of a Nidley, you don't want the armor. <laughs> you know, it's... It, well, yeah, you, you want the magic resistance. 
As it stands, Nuketuk is defending the last outer tower, the last bastion of control. Luckily for Rocket, they can always throw up an extra tower to slow down the Copenhagen Wolves' minions with that Azir passive. But we can still feel this trepidatious game. Slow and steady, and I, I think it's both good and bad, because Callista and Irelia is going to get scary, Shen's going to get tanky, but you're also letting Azir farm up. You're letting Sivir become relevant. You're letting Rumble get closer to his hourglass. For sure, but Rocket right now aren't chasing the, the fights when Copenhagen Wolves are kind of putting them out in front of them. They have a fair amount of hard engage here that we've already looked at. Uh, they're going to be forced into these fights around the uh, the neutral objectives coming up, like in 1 minute 30 when Dragon comes up. It, as long as they don't get picked off before, uh, and with Rocket's warding on the top side and just through some of the jungle on the lower side, there's no reason for Rocket to get picked up. But Steve hasn't really made a whole bunch of teleport plays with Equalizer because the situations haven't been present. Yeah. He's not actually had the opportunity to do it. And that's why Rocket don't really seem to be doing all that much with what they've got, because right now they haven't been forced to. They've only really lost uh, just a couple of towers, and Wolves haven't pushed them any further. It doesn't feel like a Wolves that are playing with nothing to lose. They're very controlled, which uh, I would have liked to have seen with this kind of performance earlier in this game. Yeah, that's for sure. Copenhagen Wolves playing aggressive last week, allowed them to beat H2K. Mixed up that strategy against Rocket. As you mentioned, stress. 45 seconds until Dragon spawns. Vision control being established by the Wolves. Litter a whole lot of wards when they have something to fight for. A little bit of a defensive uh, sweep there from Vanda, seeing that Javelin toss coming in. Morales is spotted out, but Shook is going to back away to look for uh, the setup on the dragon themselves. So, Copenhagen Wolves, they are setting up the vision around it. They have most of the vision control that they need. But look at Steve up in the top lane, pushing in to the Shen. So at this point, he wants to shove just Shen, uh, Lenny in just as much as he possibly can at this point, so that Lenny, when the dragon does arise, has to A, lose experience and lose the ability to really push that lane back out. Here's the dragon side. This is gone before Rakai can even respond to this. Well. Dragon number three. They go for mid tower instead though, look at this. Nuketuk is pushing and has the sun disc up. So they want to trade this for a much better objective for themselves. So gold and lane control. Teleport comes up from Lenny. That will be enough to dissuade the pressure despite the dark band connecting. Copenhagen Wolves opt not to follow in. The only real hard CC engage they have will be that flash taunt or taunt flash from Shen. They're holding on to it for now. Rocket were not on the same page with that play. Uh, the Sun Disc goes up, Steve is already rotating, but on the back line, right at the Sun Disc was Mr. Rales. Didn't get anywhere near the turret to look to push. And the teleport comes in early from Lenny to make sure they can't push the turret, but now Rocket just used a lot of the pressure on their map without getting anything for it. That's the third dragon now over the Copenhagen Wolves. It gives them the added mobility to now look to set up uh, the movements between lanes that they're looking for with a 1-3 run right now even faster. Wolves are in a great position to look to set themselves up across all three lanes. You see some items being purchased. So Copenhagen Wolves are going to use the gold lead that they have earned, turn it into an item lead. Sunfire K plus Spurred Visage for Lenny's split pushing Shen. You can see him taking control of the bottom lane. More of Melmortius was completed for Soren a little while ago. He's setting up Mantle in the top lane. And that 1-3-1, one, one, it, is, it is gaining Copenhagen Wolves some control. But they've not taken the mid outer turret. They've not pushed to the inner turret up top. For Copenhagen Wolves, that's how they need to gain some control. The other alternative, They've got a fantastically quick Baron, but the amount of damage Nidalee, Irelia, and Callista have, they could play the Baron bait as we're getting later and later into the game. It's going to be difficult for Rocket to even look to set up uh, some kind of steal, but Rocket shouldn't have to steal it at that point, because if Copenhagen Wolves put themselves all inside the pit, that's when Steve with his Rumble is going to open up. The Azir is going to open up the damage. So it is still dangerous for Copenhagen Wolves. If they try and just pull that trigger before it's, uh, before it's easily accessible for them, Rocket certainly will punish them. Great risk and great reward. Copenhagen Wolves 
10th place. Three wins, 13 losses on a split. Sometimes great reward comes with great risk. That's why it's great risk, Trevor. You don't always get it, otherwise it wouldn't be a great risk. <laughs> I mean, I wish that was a thing, otherwise, you know, I'd just buy lottery tickets sort of thing. Hey, great risk, I got a great I reward. Had to argue semantics. I hate it when you're right. <laughs> Open egg and wolves. Shook, still farming up a storm. Got an hourglass completed. Gonna be playing that sort of bruiser nidly. If memory serves, it was a similar style of um, item build from Diamond Prox last week. And he was pouncing into the middle of team fights. Well, here's, uh, here's the Baron play that you were talking about. Ends up with Soren taking a bit it's of a damage. Little, it's a little awkward. I, I mean, it's not so much a Baron play as a just making sure you know we're here. Well, the problem is, like, they aggro it for themselves and then they're like, mm, they're kind of mid lane. Probably don't want to push in on that. It, it's. It's not a play that I think Copenhagen Wolves uh, even themselves feel comfortable in making, so they shouldn't even look to make it. This is the problem. Krepo said the uh, the sign of poor shot calling is a bad Baron call. And okay, that wasn't a Baron call in the sense that they actually committed to it, but you can see that Wolves are teasing with the idea. Yeah, they are. Yankos is now teasing with death. He's going to use the explosive cask, but Black Shield was put onto Soren. Big chunk from a javelin toss. That'll do it, though. That will be enough for the Wolves to actually commit to this, because, uh, I mean, Yankos putting himself that far out there, because of the warding from the Wolves, it was enough to uh, set that fight up. Here come the top laners into it, though. Stand United was being channeled on cast. Lenny should arrive. Equalizers down. They've stopped the Baron, at least. Lenny forced to flash defensively, Ooh. and Kars gets out alive. Nuketak looking for the kill. So, Stand United has used Teleport from Steve. Rocket, the little bit of pushing power, might get themselves a tower. Here they make the same play again. Put the Sun Disc up, push for the mid tower. You know Copenhagen Wolves can't really defend this. They were so heavily chunked. And look at the damage that Azir is already doing right now. And the Teleport coming in behind from Lenny, though. So, Lenny needs to get the taunt. He's also going to get through the Sun Disc. That's a two man taunt. He gets headbutted away. Emperor's will will divide Lenny under the tower. The Flame Splitter is chunking down Soren. And that Sun Disc doing a lot of work. Copenhagen Wolves. Slightly underestimating damage and the disengage from Rocket. Now, there is so much disengage coming from Rocket that there's no real way of Copenhagen Wolves taking the fight when numbers are equal. There is really no chance for them to even look for that kind of fight. And you can see the Rocket. Uh, they'll just sit fairly comfortable in this situation, knowing their ultimates are available, to allow Copenhagen Wolves to make almost none, no decision. Almost no decision. They start the Baron and then it, it's, I mean, it's easy to tell for Rocket that they know it's a bad call. And what a difference when you look at that Baron call versus how Fnatic does 20 to 30 minute Barons. And even last week, uh, Gambit also had a fantastic early Baron call. They had good vision control. They knew how quickly they could take the objective and rushed it. I mean, I can't fault uh, Copenhagen Wolves for looking for it after you chunk the, the jungler, but one of the biggest problems is from earlier, Steve went unchecked on this run. He's very, very strong right now. And as long as he's got teleport and his equalizer and isn't in the fight, that's when Copenhagen Wolves can look to make a play like this. This is the fourth dragon now of the game, under contention. This time both teams are around here, and we've already spoken about how Wolves can't take the head-on fight. The ultimates are back available for Rocket. Shook needs to hit some spears here if they want to fight this. This could come to a 50-50 smite fight. Shook has it available, Yankos has it available. It's secured by Rocket. Dragon number one, and they do not want the fight. Aspect of the dragon been delayed. Yeah, another six minutes onto the clock, but finally, 32 minutes into this game, the mid outer tower falls and might not be over yet. That's a big spear onto Mr. Riley's. The wolves are not done yet. They are not, but they don't. They cannot deal with the wave clear. They can't. Copenhagen Wolves, this is the. This is another time where you've tried to push a tower. It's been a few Nuke times. Duck has just cleared it out. Nuke Duck did finish the death cap. That's his next item. So starting to rack up. A lot of ability power, 590 with his current build. Has the penetration from Void Stuff, has the very burst oriented Azir build. He might be going for that Hourglass next, which you can see Steve already has completed. So, again, that small gold lead that Rocket had has not alluded to a lot of control. There is a, a moment coming up here where Copenhagen Wolves can look to at least get further vision on the top side. Once Rumble shows bottom side uh, and shows himself in the wave, if he stays there, 
Rocket don't have that teleport available. So they can push out, get some deeper wards, look to pressure at least top and mid. And as soon as you draw them away, that's where you can set up further vision as well and look to get in other lanes. But Steve has backed away from the lane here. So uh, Wolves have to play this a lot more carefully because they can't actually commit to anything without being able to see uh, Rumble. And Steve's not the kind of player that's going to sit over there with no teleport and not look to move. Yeah. And you can see the weaknesses of Copenhagen Wolves draft coming into play now. They had good lanes, they did well in lanes. They were playing the split push game, but Wolves are not fully committed to split pushing. They're not fully committed to the 1v1. Because, well, they're not consistently doing it though. <laughs> I, and, and like part of the reason is that they just haven't been aggressive enough in their deep warding. They haven't been going in as like a three-man unit, putting wards down deep and looking to rotate. Soren pushing up without the wards it has been caught. Stand United being channeled. Lenny is going to be looking for the taunt. This has now turned into a three-on-two. Look at the jungle. The wolves are moving through it. The uh, engage gets Stand United at the very least. So it'll be teleport v teleport for a little while, and Rocket will have timed Lenny's ultimate. Wolves are back on the Baron. This is one of the biggest problems that uh, you see a lot of teams have, is just, I don't know what to do. Okay, let's go back. The thing is, if the Wolves get enough time, the Rend plus Smites should make it a 65-35 Baron, if they chunk it effectively. For sure. But Rockout are never going to give themselves that time because Rockout aren't under any other pressure. There is no external factor for Rockout to not be around the Baron or at least close enough to contest to the point where Wolves just go, oh, they're here, back away. There's nothing forcing Rockout's hand to take a step back away. And it's just this ping pong of, of wards and vision control. Just up to the enemy jungle and back away. And that's all that is happening right now until one of these teams finally either ma uh, catches a pick or manages to get themselves some pressure elsewhere on the map. Dragon will do it when it comes up, about three minutes away on that one. It will drag the teams down, but I feel like Rockout will make the same play again. It's on Soren at that point to set up the top side in time for the Dragon to at least take a tower and put more pressure onto Rockout. And you don't actually want to team fight Rockout. Right. With the Gragas, with the Rumble, I quite like Yanko's picking up the Frozen Heart, considering how auto-attack reliant both Irelia and Kalista are. That attack speed reduction even more effective against the team composition that the Wolves put together. But this may be a battle of Barons and Dragons, and again, Vision from Wolves is great around Baron, but it hasn't necessarily equated into 100% I mean, control. Vision itself is a two-step process. Getting the vision tends to be the easy bit. Using the vision is the thing that the Wolves haven't done with any of this. It's like they've had decent vision control, but they've never had it in places where Rockhead have been able to be punished by moving forward. They, they managed to catch Yankos once. It, around the Baron Buff, but it didn't equate to anything further. However, if they've managed to set up wards deeper and have that happen again and again, you punish Rockat for even stepping forward in their jungle. You need to make the enemy jungle uh, dangerous territory for themselves before you start making any of these plays. Multiple blind face checks. Force that, and then you can make them eat a dark binding and kill them. Good theory. <laughs> Carson Shook gonna clear out the Baron Pit once more. We'll see if they can get themselves some deep vision down, throwing out those javelins for a little bit of scouting. And Soren down in that bottom lane. He has no teleport, so if the wolves are out of position elsewhere, Soren could get caught out. Although the last time Rocket tried to kill Soren, Lenny just stands united to it, to it up and then yeah. uh, ended that attempt. <laughs> yeah. For sure. One of the biggest problems uh, for Copenhagen Wolves and their vision is because they're not running a, a, a jungle that wants to build Sightstone, Nidalee just kind of goes, nope, don't need that, just going to build AP. Uh, they have two upgraded ward trinkets, which isn't intrinsically a problem as long as you're uh, having the upgraded sweepers, you've got pink wards, and you're taking control of the enemy vision so that they just can't put their own wards down. Rocket on the other side, three sweepers, two Sightstones. They're sitting pretty when it comes to at least defending areas that they have to for now because they know that Rocket from this point are going to draw Copenhagen Wolves into two points or at least engage on the three remaining members that aren't split pushing. And then it's a case of how much do you stop in the side lanes. That's on Rocket's shoulders. Yeah, while you're talking about all the items, we're well into the late game. You've got a four item freeze. Pick themselves up a no magic mantle to go with the BT, Blade of the Ring, etc. Mr. Rawls, I had Shiv. 
Bloodthirster. So let's see which AD carry Ooh. is going to do more damage. Obviously, the utility that Rolls will bring. The rest of his team cannot be understated. Dragon is up and Rocket making it very clear they will not give up another Dragon uncontested. They won't. Spears coming out from Shook. Haven't yet landed, but you can see how afraid Rocket are of actually stepping forward to the Dragon Pit without committing to it fully. But again, there's no real way of Copenhagen Wolves actually dealing with the wave clear that Rocket have right now. So they can always put this just nice buffer of distance where you can just sidestep the spear at this point. I mean, the only real person that they're worried about a spear uh, hitting is Nukta because there's a spell shield on Mr. Rales. The rest of the Rocket lineup are fairly tanky and they have a, a little bit of healing coming from Alice. So I actually like this play from Rocket to just kind of cut straight down the middle. Say, we don't care that you want to go for the Dragon. We're forcing you to come and defend your base. Same play, third time in a row. This time for the Inhibitor Tower. It's going to be a more difficult one to sell. I agree. Punish the limited wave clear. Make Freeze go for those autos and then try to bounce him back. With an explosive cast. Let's see if Rocket can make it work. They're still down in gold. Dragon will be secured. Soon enough, we'll have more dragons killed than champions. <laughs> Stress. This is actually on track to be the, the, the most passive kill-based game we've had since Origin Copenhagen Wolves. That had 11 kills in 40 minutes. It doesn't surprise me at this point from the way that uh, the teams are playing passively. Rockat choose not to wow. do this fight. Wow. Um, they go for the Baron instead. And Wolves are being it. way too comfortable with this. Okay, Callista cancels your recall, but Cast Hood already back. Rocket have pretty good Baron clear themselves now with uh, this Azir with the damage that Rumble is going to have. So now Ooh. Soren blasted in. Yankos knocks Soren closer. Baron Shook got it. stolen. Shook steals the Baron as well as Dragon number four. Oh, Dentist throws Ooh. his hands up in the air. Steve and the rest of Rocket say they don't care. Five on four. Right, teleport back from Steve to defend the inhibitor. The rest of Rocket, they're pushing. This will be a four on three. Lenny's pushing bottom Wait, lane at the same it. time. He cancelled it. Or the That's tower was an killed. inhibitor. So, there's so many minions here. Rocket are onto the tower. This is five versus three. They might be trading inhib for inhib. Just as we were saying, our pass of the game is, it has been blown wide open. Who commits the hardest here? Rocket are backing off already. Lenny has not backed off. He's pushing a big barren stack of waves. Copenhagen Wolves can use the spears to prevent the backs here coming from Rocket. Not enough people can get back to stop Lenny at this it. point. Lenny. They've got one Nexus turret already. Lenny is pushing for a second. The Wolves, all they've got to do is stop the recall. Lenny is onto the next Nexus turret. Take a look at the Wolves. They're interrupting the recalls. Nuke Duck is trying to get back. He may be able to finish his cooldown. Lenny has got barren empowered minions. The Copenhagen Wolves are on the brink of being eliminated from the LCS and they may be picking up the win that keeps them alive. Lenny, Lenny, can you do it? He's still on the Nexus. He's hammering it away. Nuktak and Van der Veen to run all the way back. The Sharima Shuffle. Copenhagen Wolves keep their hopes alive. For the first time in six weeks, we've heard the howl twice in a row. Copenhagen Wolves need to go 2-0 this week. They play Giants tomorrow. And if SK goes 0-2, we are on track for a tiebreaker for ninth and 10th place. My word, what an ending to that game. Such a passive game for 35 minutes, nobody making any decisions at all. <laughs> Rocket starter Baron, Shook comes in, steals it away. As you said, on the very brink of being out of the LCS. A loss here puts them in automatic relegation. And they keep their hopes alive. My word, the Copenhagen Wolves right now. Whew. I mean, they played without fear for the last five minutes of that one for sure. They uh, certainly went for it. And it was just a game of chase. Cut down Rocket and, and stop them from recalling. Rocket will be reviewing that decision to give up Dragon number four. Potentially into the 
into the postseason. Rock out are now seven and 